Why not? Thank you. Now here's Mr. Sterling Hayden, who has not been with us for the past three years. And as I say, Sterling, you have gotten more reaction from our audience begging us to replay the show. And everybody is happy that you're back with us tonight. Well, I thank you. I thank you. you now, know. this uh, this assignment to uh, Yugoslavia to cover the funeral of Tito, what was that all about? Well, I guess, I guess, I guess primarily, uh, I was there a couple of years in the war. And uh, I was in the Marine Corps. And uh, we were attached to an outfit called OSS, you know, the yep. old OSS. Yep. They made pictures about it. I yep. think they made a picture with Alan Ladd called OSS or some damn thing. And... Uh, it was a very moving thing to us, and I, uh, I, uh, I uh, you know, as, as we all watched the, in these last few months, as we watched Tito go out, because he sure took his time, didn't he? Didn't he? he yeah, he yeah. He... <laughs> I, I thought he might, you know, live forever, and I got thinking, I got thinking, well, uh, he got close to tying the Franco last the longest contest, you know. How long was that, man? Oh, Franco, I think, was six, eight months before he finally took the big step. Well, that's enough on that subject. Yep. Yeah, yeah, two different men, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I, I had a, I had a, I had a, I had a, I had a powerful feeling that, uh, Somehow, some part of me, I don't. I I just like to be there when when the old man goes, you know, because he he was he was uh, led us to, to be conservative about it. By God, he he was an original. Hmm? Never mind the politics, you know. I meet people. I meet pe people here. I've been back in New York now six days, okay, from Paris, and by well, uh, you know, after Belgrade, and uh, I can tell when I say uh, Yugoslavia, some people are Tito, some people say, hey, yeah, yeah, okay. And I say, that's not the point. That's not the, never mind the politics for the moment. What we're talking about is a god, giant of a human being, eh? Maverick, who, independent, uh, free yeah, thinker, free yeah, spirit, yeah. all those things. And, uh, and I learned while I was there, because I went over on sort of a, you might say, uh, you know, I'm not a journalist for heaven's sakes. I, 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 I had contact with Rolling Stone, and they said, well, if you want to do uh, three, five thousand words, fine, eh? Sure. But, uh... They didn't feel like putting up any bread in front, and they didn't buy me any ticket, you know, so I went on my own, and I was, well, you mentioned something in the uh, generous introduction of yours. I uh, had, a, I was scheduled to do a picture called something to do with Charlie Chan. Hmm? Uh, oh, yeah, this is the yeah, remake, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Randall remake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just, I just worked, I'd worked, uh, about two months ago, I worked three days with, a. Uh, with uh, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. Oh, nine to five. Nine to five. Nine to five. Nine to five. Yeah. Okay, so that was great. And then, uh, then I got involved in this Chan thing, and I had something about it bothered me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just did bother me. Something said to me, "Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Stay away from this." When you're broke, and I'm always broke. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know, it's just my nature. You know, it's like the sun, the the, the, the sun and the moon they come up in the east, right? Okay. To me, I'm broke. I'm I mean, not really broke, but you know, broke. Broke. Yeah. Trouble enough, though. Know? And uh, and that was fifty thousand a week for five weeks. Sure, and I signed a contract. And then suddenly I got to thinking, okay, I'm supposed to start on the seventh day of May, and about that time, why, uh, old Tito's going to be, you know, something said he's going to be dead. And so I went down, and to make a quick story out of it, something said, no, baby, don't do it, don't do it. So I said to the Morris office, tell them no, you know, and they said, well, look at you, got the contract. <laughs> 50 you know? grand a week. I said, well, sometimes you know what you can do with a contract, you know, I mean, right. just tell them it's a personal matter, you know. A friend hey, of mine's in yeah, trouble, yeah, needs some yeah, help, yeah, all right. just the way you feel, huh? And, uh, so, uh... Um, I jumped across to, uh, you know, I, I, I got across, I flew across to, uh, to, uh, to Belgrade, Belgrade, as they say, and uh, spent a night in the uh, Intercontinental, which is like every Hilton hotel in the world, you know, and uh, went out and walked for 15 hours and looked at the town. I'd never been in a town in Yugoslavia, you know, because in the war, yeah, you we were up in the mountains. Yeah, behind we the, the lines. Mountains. We were in the mountains, and I was running a boat. I was running a boat across for a while. So suddenly I'm in Belgrade. Oh, man. Heavy town, you know, every dark town. And... Um, and uh, then I went back up to Paris for a night, and well, then no, by this no, time I'm broke. Ho, huh? ho, ho. What makes it a heavy, dark town, Belgrade? To begin with, it's extraordinarily ugly. Hmm? I mean, just to look at from across the Saba River, the Danube and the Saba meet, huh? mm -hmm. and at the apex is uh, Belgrade. Hmm? There were no flags flying. You know, I'm used to Paris. I've lived eight years more or less on the river in Paris, half of each year, okay? And Paris, of course, is the precise opposite, is it not? Right? The flags and the, you know, the guar, right. as they say, the guar, the whole thing. And the river, I lived on the river, of course, you know? Now, the river Saba looked like, looked like, looked like, uh, Hoboken, you know? Pardon me, Hoboken. But, uh, you know, I don't look too good over there in that waterfront, you know? And, um, so I walked around all night, you know, and, uh, flew back up to Paris. And by this time, I'm out of money, hmm? Well, I'm right out of money, hmm? But I met a lady who was going to produce a picture. And she said, could I come up and have coffee at 8.30 in the morning? I said, of course. I had a little room in a hotel. She came up at 8.30. And we got along well. She had to leave in about 20 minutes. And uh, I told her this little story. She said, why, why don't we buy you a ticket down to Belgrade? I said, well, quite, you know, nobody does that. You know, we just met. And so she flew off to Berlin. In about half an hour, the phone calls. Is her secretary? She says, Mr. Hayden, there's a prepaid ticket waiting for you at Orly Airport to, to Belgrade. 
And I said to a friend of mine, call a taxi. Then <laughs> <laughs> I got down to Belgrade, and of course, Belgrade by this time is full, 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 full. Huh? So yeah. I spent the first night in a railway station. I figured at least it'd be warm, like in this particular. It was colder even than this studio of yours. Well, hmm? Where'd you stay? In, in the train station on a bench? Yeah, just because you couldn't get a room, you know? Yeah. It was about, you know, about uh, 11 o'clock when I pulled in. Of course, I worked my way into a little hotel for $9 a night, uh, for one night, and then, I, you know, I met people and, you know, things got... Uh, yeah. I finally ended up in the Slavia Hotel, and, uh, well... And then, of course, the old man died, and uh, by God, I was there. I wasn't working on any Charlie Chan picture. I was right where I wanted to be. Yeah, yeah, it you was hate a very it. moving thing. You hate acting in movies anyway, don't you? No, I don't hate it anymore. I, you uh, used to hate it a lot. I used to. I used to. I'm not so much hated as I was scared of it. Because I had the feeling, I think I said this to you. We said it to each other. I said I simply had the feeling I ain't really professional. Hmm? It was mm -hmm. that simple. I've got mm -hmm. no theatrical background, you know what I mean? Got and, uh, and, uh, and you have the feeling even if you get away with it, with all of the help of everybody around you. Hmm? Uh, but since uh, I think I mentioned to you once when uh, we were last met, which was about, I think, what, 77? Hmm? Three years Something back. Like that. Okay. Uh, I had discovered a thing called, 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 called grass, you know, about 12 years ago. Well, that changed everything for me in terms of acting. I suddenly felt like an actor field. I relaxed, you know. I mean, just take one little toke and uh, let her go. <laughs> And uh, so now I've had a good time since then, and I just work a little bit at a time. You Do know? you still uh, take a little toke every now and then to kind of yeah. relax? How does that affect the writing? Uh, well, I can't write on it. No, no, no you can't write on it. Can't. But uh, I thought for a while I could break booze with it. I, uh, I've got a thing with booze. I, uh, I'm a boozer. I'm a boozer. I like I, the booze. And I huh? say it with, no, well, I mean, I'm past the point of... Uh, Talking about it lightly, you know, it's a, if you're an alcoholic, you're an alcoholic, and, uh, and I ain't a recovered alcoholic, though I spent, uh, I spent a couple of months in a place for, for alcoholism in 78, hmm? and I won't mention the name because I don't think they would like me to, it's not far from here, and you know the names of some people who've been there, that's hmm? perhaps irrelevant, but, uh, and uh, it's based on the AA thing, which is the only thing that seems to work, and I happen to be somebody, I, I, I can't go the AA route. Uh, route, route. You know, I just root, can't. Root. No, I don't. I, I, I can't. But maybe because I don't really want to stop. You know. Well, you went to this thing for how long? To seven two months. Yeah. Two months. What they do for you there? Anything? Well, many things, of course. Uh, I came out feeling like a young ocelot with his first direction, you know? I was just about <laughs> fine. And, uh, and I went over to my ship, and I decided I'd take my ship down. My ship was in Paris. I decided I'd take her down to the Mediterranean, right? So that's another long story. No, that's another story. But anyway, I took her down to... Uh, Got as far as Avignon, finally. But uh, en route, there's a town called Chalon. Chalon sur Saône. Well, I stopped in Chalon, and there were 198 locks between Paris and the River Saône. We stop in Chalon, and uh, this is going to make you laugh, okay? okay? Four months I haven't been drinking. Four okay. months, right? Well, there's a hotel there called the Royale, hmm? which I had known in the past. So I checked Most the Royale. Most cities have a oh, hotel oh, called the Royale. Oh, yeah, France, Lisbon, for all, yeah. sure. Yeah. And it's a lovely place. I check in, and, uh, and I have to make some phone calls, and... Uh, I walk into the room, I take a look to my left, and I see a little, a little brown ice box. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. What they, what they call a mini bar, yeah. okay? Well, you put the money in or something. Oh, no, no, you no. push no, the button. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, so I thought, oh, wait a minute. Uh, that's the mini bar. And I looked at my key ring, and here's the big key for the door. Mm -hmm. And here's the little key. I go, I walk right over, and I knew, like a shot. Never mind what I learned at school. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. Now I open it up, right, to make sure the key fits. Uh -huh. I open it up. And here are all these little men looking at me, you know? They're yeah. like the Muppets, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's Kermit. All these beautiful little bottles. Yeah. They're all looking little at me. Little vodka, little say, scotch. Hey, well, maybe, uh, and I knew. So I drank her dry, you know? <laughs> Emptied her clean. I drank her right dry. Everything except the lemon pop. Right? Yeah. And in the morning, the lady says, uh, the lady downstairs, she says, Monsieur, <laughs> and did you have anything from the mini bar? I said, everything. <laughs> you name it, I got it. She didn't even think she wrote down uh, 280 francs, huh? which yeah. is, you know, 70, 80 bucks, something like that. Yeah. How'd you feel the next morning? I felt great. Really? Sure, because I'd been four months dry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> So it goes, huh? Yeah, so it goes. So it goes. Well, that was just your one fall off the wagon. Are you back on now, or have you emptied the mini bar again? No, no, I've emptied a lot of mini bars again. Yep. Yep. Right now, since we're talking about it, right now uh, I'm uh, on something called antabuse, you know. So I know that uh, I know that I can drink. It. Oh no, because and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. If you... I know it's a crutch, uh, uh, but what the hell? I carry a cane, <laughs> so why not have two? You know? Why do you carry that cane? You oh, I love canes. I um... yeah, but you walk fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I just like to walk with a cane. Okay. <laughs> How come you wear the band around your head? Uh, same reason. I like to wear same a band reason, around my same head. Same reason. 
I don't know, it takes care of the headache in the morning, too. Feels good, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. You, you put it on, you soak, you soak this thing in cold water and slap it around your head and it starts the day right, you know? Now, the ant abuse that you're taking, that if you would have a drink of liquor, you would... Uh... Well, this is a serious subject. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me do some commercials and we'll see how serious it gets. We'll be right back with Sterling Aiden after these words from the NBC television stations. <laughs>